exercise is one of the best things we can do for ourselves. This is especially true for people with diabetes. Along with making healthy food choices, taking medications if necessary, and monitoring your blood glucose, exercise is an important part of your diabetes management plan. Whether you are newly diagnosed or have been living with diabetes for years, adding exercise to your daily routine will help make all your efforts to manage your diabetes more effective. Once I started walking a lot, I noticed that my sugar started dropping quite a bit. So that was quite an incentive. Exercise can have a positive impact on your blood glucose levels. In the short term, you will notice your daily blood glucose readings go down, which in turn will lower your A1C level, a long-term indication of your overall blood glucose levels. Well, I started exercising like two months ago, and my A1C was over seven, which then I thought might lead to being on medication. Now, I just had it taken recently, and it was 6.9, and that really made me feel good. Not only will exercise help you reach a healthy blood glucose goal, it can help you reduce body fat and increase lean body mass, which are key factors in diabetes management. Uh, when I decided to take action with my weight, I was up to about uh, 249 pounds. I lost my weight, which totaled about 70 pounds. Uh, my waist measurements went down from 44 to 46 inches uh, down to um, 35, 36. And I've kept my weight off for about, I guess it's going on seven years. Exercise and moderate weight loss are also good for your heart. This is especially important because people with diabetes have an increased risk of heart disease. Exercise can reduce your risk of heart attack and stroke by improving your cholesterol and blood pressure levels, and by improving the health of the blood vessels supplying oxygen to the heart and brain. And exercise has another benefit. It can reduce stress, giving you an increased sense of well-being and accomplishment. Before I was diagnosed, very sedentary. I did nothing but watch TV and eat all the time. So when I found that I had to exercise, I felt like this is going to be the hardest thing I have done. Many people have a picture of what exercise is in their heads, and a lot of times that picture seems impossible, like running a marathon or lifting huge barbells. But in reality, exercise comes in many forms. Aerobic exercise means with oxygen. When you use the large muscles in your body to do an activity for several minutes or longer, they need more oxygen. Your heart has to pump harder to deliver enough blood to the muscles doing the work to get the oxygen they need. Aerobic exercise raises your heart rate. It improves your body's overall circulation, increases your endurance, and burns calories, which can help you lose weight. It is one of the key forms of exercise when trying to manage your diabetes. Go for a walk. Ride a bike. Dance. Swim. Or hike. Find an aerobic activity you enjoy to get you moving. Brisk walking is a good choice because you can do it anytime, almost anywhere. Use a pedometer to count your steps and gradually work up to 10,000 steps each day. Start out slowly and over time increase the pace of your walk. Taking a hilly route will also increase the energy you expend and help you get the most out of your exercise. I can go take a casual walk or a little, speed it up a little bit, you know, and, and still enjoy it. Whatever aerobic activity you choose, Aim to do it at least five times a week for a minimum of 30 minutes each time at a moderate intensity. Remember, some activity is better than none. Start slowly 
and gradually add exercise as your body gets used to it. Eventually, you can also increase the intensity of your aerobic exercise to increase the benefits. Resistance exercise is any activity that works your muscles against an opposing force. It increases muscle mass and strength, is good for bone health, and helps control your diabetes by allowing your body to make better use of blood glucose. While increasing your muscle mass, you are also helping to decrease your overall body fat. And over time, resistance exercises can also improve the health of your blood vessels. This can reduce your risk of heart attack and stroke. The most common form of resistance exercise is weightlifting. Make sure you check with your diabetes care team before adding this type of activity to your routine. If weight machines are not available, small handheld weights, stretch bands, and calisthenics are alternatives. Gradually, work up to resistance exercises that target all your muscle groups three times a week. Aim to do two to three sets of eight to 10 repetitions. If you find it easy to lift the weight more than 10 times, add a few pounds to the weight so that after the eight to 10 repetitions, you feel like you've had enough. You can even use your own body for resistance. Try push-ups or Pilates to increase your overall strength. Flexibility exercises like stretching can also benefit your overall health. Flexibility exercises help lengthen your muscles, increase blood flow, and prevent injury. Try yoga, tai chi, and martial arts. Flexibility exercises can also provide you with a better mind-body balance. Take time to relax and stretch to feel better about yourself and reduce stress. A well-balanced exercise routine should include all three forms of activity in some manner, aerobic, resistance, and flexibility to enjoy all the benefits of exercise. But the exercises you choose to include in your routine are up to you. Maybe it'd be fun to go play some basketball again. <laughs> or do something instead of just sitting there and getting old. I swim, I play volleyball, I go to the park with my children. I go play hockey twice a week. I enjoy walking with my husband. That bicycling and myself, you know, kind of got along. I think most people have to have some type of, be in some type of structure program that guides them and, and somewhat takes them by the hand um, and guides them in the right direction because a lot of times it's hard to do it by yourself. Creating an exercise routine can help you stay on track, exercise safely, help you include all forms of exercise into your activities, and ensure you reach your goals. With a routine that fits your lifestyle, you can enjoy how activity benefits your diabetes without feeling overwhelmed. Because diabetes is a risk factor for heart disease, if you haven't been very active in a long time, meet with your health care provider before starting your physical activity plan. So we're going to put you on the treadmill and have you walk, and you're going to go and increase... Depending on your age and overall health, your health care provider may recommend an exercise stress test before starting a new exercise plan. Any special needs you may have should be taken into consideration when creating your exercise routine. For example, if you have eye disease, such as advanced stage retinopathy, weight training may have to be limited to light resistance or not at all. If you have neuropathy in your feet or orthopedic problems that make it difficult to walk, upper body exercise may be a good option for you. Once your doctor gives you the okay, meet with your diabetes care team to talk about your physical activity plans. Tell me some exercise that you're interested in doing. It is important to choose an activity you enjoy, because the more you enjoy it, 
the easier it will be to make it a routine. Listening to music or books on tape, or watching your favorite TV show while exercising, can help. Here are some other tips to help you keep on track. Make physical activity a priority. Schedule it into your day and guard that time. Don't let anything get in your way. Work with your care team to set goals that are realistic and achievable. At first, your goal may be to walk just 10 minutes a day. When you can do that, make your goal 15 minutes a day. Steadily increase the amount of activity you do. When I'm on the treadmill now, it starts off at zero, and then you raise the tread level up one. Well, I'm up to one, and I'm, I'm able to walk at 3.1 on that now. And it's very exciting to see you being able to do more. Remember, aim for 30 to 60 minutes of aerobic activity on most days of the week. For weight loss, you may need more. Once you lose weight, you feel a lot lighter, so you feel more energetic, like, oh, I can go another mile. You may want to ask a friend or family member to join you. She'll go down to her basement gym, and I'll hop on her, her bicycle and start riding, and I start thinking, you know, I should be doing that too. Each of you can encourage the other, and as you stick to your routine, reward yourself. Perhaps your reward can be a new book, even browsing in the mall after you've gone walking there. Keep track of how well you're doing by keeping a log. Write down when you were active, what you did, for how long, how you felt afterward, and your blood glucose results before and after physical activity. This log will help you see your progress and will be important when you meet with your diabetes care team. Many mobile apps and websites can also be helpful when tracking your physical activity to help you stay motivated to reach your goals. If you do skip your session for any reason, don't think of it as a failure. Everyone needs a break every now and then. Just get back to working out as soon as you can. And finally, find ways to add physical activity into your daily routine. You know, with the kids and stuff, it's hard to find between, you know, um, youth events and sports meetings and swimming teams and stuff like that and your own job and your husband's job. When do you find the time to exercise? You've got to make time. You know, if it's walking around your neighborhood or walking your kids to the park, that's still exercising. When shopping, park further away from the store and walk. Take the stairs instead of the elevator. Use a push mower instead of a riding lawn mower. Soon you won't even notice you've added more healthy activity to your routine. You'll just enjoy the health benefits. The toughest part is getting your shoes on and getting to the door. But once you're past that, uh, it could be fun. You know, and allow yourself the opportunity to succeed. One of the most important things for people with diabetes to learn about being active is how to do it safely. Exercising safely will ensure you maintain your activity routine and enjoy the benefits of activity each day. Once you have decided on the type and amount of exercise to add to your daily routine, follow these steps to avoid injury. Warm up doing a low-level aerobic activity. Remember, aerobic activity is any activity that raises your heart rate. Try walking. Do your exercise. Cool down by slowing down. Then do some stretching. Am I doing the right intensity level for my age? And Before you begin to exercise, ask your diabetes care team what intensity level is best for you. Throughout your exercise session, check your intensity level to ensure you are working out hard enough to get the benefits of physical activity, but not so hard that you may be unsafe. One way to do this is to monitor your target heart rate. You can do this by taking your own pulse or having a healthcare provider 
check your blood pressure throughout the session. Since everyone's endurance level is different, work with your diabetes care team to find the safest target heart rate for you and the correct way to monitor it. The biggest safety concern for people who take insulin or certain oral medications for diabetes is that exercise can cause your blood glucose to drop too low. When your blood glucose drops below 70 milligrams per deciliter, you have low blood glucose. This is called hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia develops when the parts of your management plan become out of balance. When you have low blood glucose, your body doesn't get the energy it needs to function. Symptoms you may experience include increased sweating, headache, weakness, a cold sweat or clammy feeling, shakiness, hunger, irritability, and dizziness. If you notice any of these symptoms while exercising, stop at once. Symptoms of hypoglycemia can begin suddenly and get worse quickly. It can even cause you to pass out. Talk to your diabetes care team about the best ways to avoid hypoglycemia. Your diabetes care team may also recommend you delay your exercise session if your blood glucose is too high and there are ketones in your urine. If this is the case, work with your diabetes care team to learn what you can do to lower your blood glucose before you exercise. And finally, when you have diabetes, you need to pay extra attention to your skin and feet. Any increased activity can be hard on your feet and skin. 